Hello everyone. I am Arya. Welcome to the object oriented programming in Python recitation. Uh, so Python is an object oriented language. Before delving deep into the different concepts of object oriented programming, I will first explain what the term object oriented means. The term object oriented signifies that we build our code around objects, which in turn serve as the building blocks to manage and organize our code. They are also used to model and manipulate data in a structured manner. These objects can represent real world things like a set of people, cars, etc. These objects contain data and actions or attributes and methods and are instances of classes. It means that these objects hold actual data and the behavior of this object is defined by a thing called a class. Classes don't hold individual data. They just define how data should be structured for objects. And there's only one copy of a class, even if there are many objects created from it. So object-oriented programming is a paradigm that really helps you in providing a modular approach for designing any software by enabling the creation of maintainable and understandable code by modeling real world concepts in an intuitive manner. So as I said earlier, once you create a class, there can be multiple objects created using that class, making more efficient and easy it, for it to update. This is very useful both for small and large scale projects and you'll be using a lot of classes and methods as you work on the homeworks and IDL. Now let's go to the examples and concepts of object-oriented programming in Python. So we can create a class in Python using the keyword class as shown here. So we create a class named CMU student here. Uh, a class has different attributes, which are the variables belonging to that particular class. So you can see here in the class CMU student, it we have uh, three attributes, name, major, ID, and the self is an attribute which represents the object itself. Uh, all of this is defined in init method. Init method is basically a special type of a method known as a constructor, and it's used to initialize attributes or variables for the particular class. So we have the attributes name, major, and ID here, and they can be initialized by doing self dot name equal to name, self dot major to major and self dot ID equal to ID. Now, uh, this is how we initialize a, initialize a class. And later on, we can create different objects belonging to this class CMU student. So here we create two different objects, student one and student two in the particular manner. We pass the values for each of the attributes name, major, and ID in order to create uh, an object called student one holding these at data or attributes for those particular uh, values, okay? So when we print these objects, what uh, it just shows us that these objects belong to the CMU student class and also gives us the memory location for these objects. So to make it a little more intuitive, what if you want to ac ac uh, access what's stored in each of these attributes? What's the name of the student or what's the ID of the student? We can do this by using the dot operator. This is a very key concept in object-oriented programming. So you can do student one dot name major anything and it will retrieve the value stored in that particular attribute in the manner given here. Now, moving on, uh, coming to methods, let's see one of the most useful methods called the wrapper method. Here, as you can see, printing student one and student two or like printing any object does not really tell you much about the data stored in those objects. So we can add a method called the wrapper method that is that gives us a more understandable information about that particular object. So when we do print student one after defining this method here, we actually get information that is useful for us. Uh, moreover, we can create any other methods also in a, a class. Here we have created uh, two methods introduce in which, uh, which returns just an introduction of the student by fetching all these attributes 
and we can also do this get score thing where a final score of a student is calculated by multiplying the score into 10. So we can see here when we uh, input five as the score and then when we do uh, or uh, when we do 7.2 as the score and when we do get score method, which again can be accessed using the dot operator here, please know, uh, note that as well. We get the output as 72, which is multiplied by 10 here. Uh, coming to the next key concept of object-oriented programming in Python, encapsulation. Uh, it focuses on bundling data and methods that operate on the data into a single unit, often referred to as a class. The major advantage of this concept is that it allows us to control the access of data and protect it, protect it from unauthorized manipulation. It can also be thought of like hiding the data from the rest of the code. And these variables are made private that we want to hide from the rest of the uh, code by encapsulation, meaning that these hidden or private variables cannot be accessed or modified outside of the class. They are initialized. In. So uh, we can initialize such type of variables by doing dot underscore underscore instead of just dot. So here score has become a private variable and um, then we can have the same old methods that we had in the last example now when we create an object student one and pass these values for the attributes in that object uh, we get a normal output uh, again when we do student one dot name we get the name of that stu uh, student but when we do student one dot score we get this attribute error cmu student object has no attribute underscore underscore score because that was a private variable that cannot be accessed outside of that class CMU student which we're trying to do here. So to get around this particular uh, access issue when we use encapsulation to protect our data we can use setters and getter method to access these private variables. So say here uh, I have initialized this private variable score as none um, we can have two methods, set score and get score, to access or manipulate this private variable. So, uh, in set score, I'm just setting the score to whatever value we input in the set score method. And the get score uh, manipulates it and multiplies it by 10, thereby returning the final score. Uh, so, when we try to set score of student one to 5.5, it'll change it from 6.3 to 5.5. It doesn't return anything here because we were not returning anything in this method. But then when we do get score to fetch that particular score data, we get 55. So we can see that it set this value of 5.5 as well as it multiplied it by 10 by when we were trying to do get score. Moving on to the next concept, that's abstraction. Uh, this um, concept is a, a majorly about simplifying complex systems by modeling classes based on the essential properties and behaviors relevant to the program while hiding unnecessary details. So let's look at the example directly here. In this, we modify CMU student class to emphasize abstraction by focusing on essential properties and behaviors, like I just said. So the CMU student class abstracts essential properties of a student, that's the name, major, and ID. Now the grade is, grades are stored privately here as a private variable, and then we have methods add grade and calculate GPA, uh, abs which abstract the details of how grades are managed and how the GPA is calculated. So the, uh, this type of abstraction basically allows you to work with a CMU student object, say here student is an object, in a very simplified manner, like you're just initializing it like you were, and then you can directly call these methods, add grade, uh, and pass whatever value you wanted by using the key operator to uh, work on this object student and we focus on the key information while hiding the complexity of the grade management. Um, moving on to inheritance. 
Inheritance effectively mirrors real world connections between real entities and it promotes code reusability, reducing the need to rewrite identical code and saving us time. So in this example, also like the word inheritance suggests, you can guess that um, we can have two classes, one parent class and one child class, and the child class can inherit the properties of the parent class. That's the high level idea. So yeah, in this example, we have graduate student as the child class or the subclass, and we have CMU student as the parent class or the super class. So graduate student will inherit the basic behavior of CMU student, but it will have additional um, attributes or methods that are very uh, key and unique only to the graduate student class, not to the CMU student class. So we have a new attribute research area here and the method display info here, which are unique to graduate student. And then when we create an object grad, grad student of this class, graduate student, we can see that the attributes here will be these attributes, which has a new research area attribute. And, uh, but a, a, an important thing to notice is we can also do the methods that we had initialized in the CMU student class, because ultimately graduate student is inheriting all the properties of CMU student and adding new ones to it. So you can use display info for a grad student object. And you can also use the older methods such as add grade here, like I have done. Uh, the next concept is polymorphism. Polymorphism means that objects of different types can be used interchangeably. For example, you have any method that works with different types of shapes, say circles, rectangles, triangles. Python allows you to use the same method name for both, making your code more flexible and versatile. It's important to note that unlike other languages, Python does not support method overloading. That is, you cannot use the same name for different methods. Uh, so if you're comfortable with this concept in other languages, it's important to remember that here. Looking at the example uh, for polymorphism here, so you have a common base class student um, with a method study. Uh, when we uh, create two different classes, CMU student and MIT student, both of them inherit from student and provide their own specific implementations of the study method. The polymorphic behavior is demonstrated when you create a list of student objects, which is actually, which actually contains instances of both CMU student and MIT student. The for loop then iterates uh, through each student in the list and the study method is called. Despite the common method name, the specific implementation of study is determined at runtime based on the actual type of each object. This showcases one of the key principles of polymorphism, which allows objects of different types to be treated as objects of a common base type and the method to be invoked dynamically based on the actual type of the object. Thank you. Uh, there'll be another part of object-oriented programming in Python, a recitation which will cover object-oriented programming for deep learning that will uh, focus on classes related to the classes you'll be using in homeworks. So all the best for the course. Thank you.